Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about pragmatic utility functions. Pragmatic utility functions are cut-down utility functions which require relatively little in the way of resources in order to evaluate them. The idea can be contrasted with the idea of ultimate utility functions, which are what utility functions you would use if you had unbounded quantities of space and time available to you. The idea originally arose out of considering the dynamics of expected utility maximizers in the context of self-improving systems. To start with, some background. Expected utility maximization is a key idea in microeconomics and forms the foundation of much of economic decision theory. The basic idea is that you consider an agent and then you look at the possible actions the agent can take in the world. and you consider all the things that the agent can do with its actuators and also any combinations of actions that it could take. And then you look at the consequences of those, those actions. And you don't just look at the immediate consequences, instead you consider as far out into the future as you can manage. And then, once you've calculated the consequences of the agent's possible actions, you rank them according to a utility function. And then you can take the action which has the most positive expected outcome according to that utility function. Um, once you've done that, you update your model of the world in accordance with any sensory information that comes in as a result of your actions, and then the whole process iterates, so you're back to considering um, the agent's possible actions again. The expected utility framework is remarkably general, and as long as you're permitted to use a Turing complete programming language in order to express the utility function, it can represent the actions of any computable agent that you care to consider. It works best, however, if you're dealing with a relatively small and compact utility function. Um, the framework becomes unwieldy if the utility function grows too large. An example of an expected utility maximizer is familiar to many people in the form of a chess playing computer program. Chess playing programs consider the board, look at the possible moves, consider their opponent's replies to their moves, and then their replies to their opponent's replies, and so on in a rapidly expanding tree of possible board positions. Once the move tree has been calculated, a position evaluation function is used to assign utility values to each of the individual leafs in the tree. And such an evaluation function often consists of using nine points for a queen, five points for a rook, and so on, using negative values to represent opponent pieces. Once those values have been calculated, a minimax algorithm is used to collapse the tree down and associate the leaf nodes with the original moves that led to them. And the minimax algorithm works by alternatingly um, minimizing and maximizing the positions on the leaves of the relevant branch of the tree. And that represents um, choosing your best opponent's reply to your best reply to your opponent's best reply to your reply, and so on. And then you've got values assigned to each of the original moves, and then you choose whichever move has the biggest value associated with it, basically. And then you update the board position, let your opponent have a move, and then the whole situation iterates itself. Next, we come to the idea of pragmatic utility functions, which are utility functions which are cut down in space or time in order to make them easier or cheaper to evaluate. The idea will be illustrated by considering the example of IBM's famous chess computer, Deep Blue. The aim of Deep Blue was to increase IBM's stock price by generating publicity by winning games of chess in competition with the human world chess champion of its era. However, the utility function of Deep Blue did not consist of the idea of winning games of chess. Instead, it was a highly complicated function consisting of over 8,000 individual components. Since Deep Blue's aim was to win games of chess, why wasn't whether the current move would help it win the game part of its utility function? The answer to that is fairly simple. In order to calculate whether a current move will lead to a win or a loss, Deep Blue would have to calculate out the entire game tree from that position, and that's a computationally intractable task in the general case. So instead, Deep Blue's designers made a more pragmatic design decision, and instead employed heuristics, a cut-down utility function that could actually be evaluated in a reasonable space of time. The distinction between pragmatic and ultimate utility functions arose by considering the combination of expected utility maximizers and self-improving systems. Normally, a utility maximizer would simply contain its own pragmatic utility function. However, if it's also a self-improving system, it would benefit from knowing what its ultimate utility function is, because it might be able to find a way to make its pragmatic utility function more closely approximate the ultimate utility function.
Taking the example of Deep Blue again, it can be seen that constructing a self-improving system based on a pragmatic utility function is often a dubious plan which limits the system's ability to improve itself. Building a self-improving version of Deep Blue which built on its own pragmatic utility function with 8,000 elements would probably result in a highly flawed chess machine since its values would be constrained to being the imperfect set of heuristics that its designers originally programmed into it. This is relevant to attempts to construct self-improving systems from a human template, since some people look at the complex set of pragmatic values of a human and then advocate that we should build agents that reflect all of those values. That seems like to be a really bad idea. Self-improving systems should have a representation of their ultimate utility function and should judge attempts to improve themselves relative to that. Um, enjoy!